Yellow, Ralph McIntyre with Astro Map Links. Well, I'm here to do another video in my video series, Ask an Astrologer. Natasha asks about moon in the eighth house from soul perspective. Welcome all you new people. Please click like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You're going to find links to my website and links to getting readings with me in the description where I dive deep into helping you understand your astrology from the soul perspective. Without further ado, let's kind of dive on in. Even though we're not talking about Pluto directly, we're talking about that eighth house. So all you Pluto people, welcome, welcome, welcome. Your intensity is always welcome here. So we know a little bit about this in the sense that we know this is a, this is Pluto in the first house with a moon in Taurus in the eighth house. So, I want to dive a little bit into the eighth house and, and first of all, I want to say that I'm not going to do this justice. I could spend probably 10 hours talking about moon in the eighth house all by itself. So we're just going to kind of hit some of the high points. We're not going to dive too deep in all of the different areas. So let's start with that eighth house. What's the eighth house? Well, the eighth house is naturally ruled by Scorpio. It's one of those relationship oriented houses. You know, the house, the seventh house is the house of marriage, but it, it's really more the roommate side of marriage. It's like, how do we get along? Who's going to take out the trash? Which side of the bed do you sleep on? Which side of the bed do I sleep on? Versus that eighth house is about that spiritual blending that merging that tantric sexuality that sex as far as a spiritual practice it's how i lose myself and how i keep myself it's also especially regarding having a moon there it's how you nurture yourself from a soul level so the moon normally ruling the fourth house and the fourth house is home and family. But traditionally speaking, what the fourth house is really talking about is how and where you nurture yourself in the physical realm, you know, ruled by cancer, ruled by the moon. You know, it's called home and family because in ancient times, that was how you nurtured yourself. It's your home, your family. But in modern times, it's a little more complicated than that because not everyone's so to speak, family nurtures you. And this is where the depth of the eighth house really kind of comes in. You know, so it's like, how do we nurture ourselves from the soul perspective? And we got a little information here because we know the moon is in Taurus. So it's like that moon is opposite that Scorpio Pluto. You know, Taurus is opposite Scorpio. And Taurus is fundamentally the need to calm down, the need to relax, the need to chill out, the need to take time to smell the flowers. And being a big Scorpio person with the South Node in Scorpio and Neptune in Scorpio myself and loving that Scorpio Pluto intensity, I'm all like calm down there's too much intensity in the world to look at and we know this person has a pluto in the first house so there's a way in which that pluto and scorpio is going to just be a magnet it's kind of like turning a light out light on at night and watching all the moss just come towards it so this person is going to attract all this intensity and that moon in the eighth house is like Whoa, slow down, slow down with all that Pluto intensity, slow down with taking on everyone else's things. And this is the thing, especially with that Pluto first house, helping you understand the fact that 
that Pluto's for you, not for everyone else. Even though it's out there on the ascendant in the first house where everyone's going to see it, everyone's going to gravitate towards you. It's not just because you can take on other people's drama doesn't mean you should. And so we're getting a theme here. That Pluto in the first house means that that ability to handle the intensity is meant to be used in a selfish way. You know, it's not up like in the 10th house or in the 6th house or the 11th house where it's much more out in the collective. It's in that house of enlightened selfishness of the first house. And then furthermore, that moon in Taurus, the need to nurture, the need to calm down, the need to nurture and calm down in the realm of Scorpio. So relationship, you know, is a key aspect of this. And I'm not talking just any kind of relationship, a relationship that's safe, a relationship that builds security, that kind of is stable in the Taurus kind of grounded realm in that moon kind of realm. You know, wherever the moon lies is kind of where you, where you love, how you interact with love, how you're, you know, interact with the heart. And so that moon in Taurus really kind of is a very um, sticky in, in, a, in a good sense. I mean, not necessarily in a bad sense, but, you know, it, it's a it's a commitment oriented moon. That Taurus moon doesn't really want change. It kind of wants to fall in love and be in love and dive deeper, especially in the eighth house. And this is the thing that's interesting because on some levels, the eighth house is a very vulnerable place for the moon because your heart, the moon represents the heart. Your heart is very vulnerable. And the thing about the eighth house is that depth of knowing, the depth of touch means the depth of pain. You know, it's like for someone to hurt your heart, they have to touch your heart. And so the deeper they are able to touch your heart, the deeper they're able to hurt your heart. And the reality is we're all monkeys. You know, Natasha, I'm pretty sure this is a female. So she's maybe dancing with these monkeys with testosterone, you know, and, you know, God knows how they can, you know, do things that are stupid and hurt us. And when we're super open and vulnerable in that eighth house Scorpio style, that means the pain is deep. So we're looking to find someone who's trustworthy. And it's not that they're not going to hurt you. That's the whole thing. It's like the reality of it. You know, people it's like, oh, don't, you don't want to get your heart broken. It's like, no, you're mistaking it. It's like for your heart to be broken means your heart's touched deeper. And that's the deal with that eighth house is it's going to want to be touched so deep. That means it's so vulnerable, so open to being hurt so deep. And the trick is, is that the dance, the commitment, you know, it's like I hurt you, but then I hold you. You know, we have a long conversation. We look into each other's eyes. We have a passionate spiritual sexual connection to kind of come back to fall in love with each other. And then we kind of dance this cycle over and over. You know, it's the it's the hurt, make up, hurt, make up, hurt, make up, you know, that allows us to get deeper into knowing who we are and knowing who the other person is. And the goal of that is to calm down, relax, so that you can dive deep into what's keeping you from what you truly desire, which is that kind of heart merging, you know, it's that losing yourself in that, you know, it doesn't have to be sexual necessarily, but sexuality can be a big aspect, but it, it's losing that self in the bonding with another person, you know, that long periods of eye contact, you know, so we'd look to where your Venus is to understand this a little bit more. But fundamentally, that moon in the eighth house is like the soul level need to bond and merge and feel and connect into situations with other people is what we're talking about here. All right. I hope this video helps you. Please click like and subscribe and I hope you have a spectacular evening.